Donald Trump has said he wouldn't be a dictator. According to his own statements, he's got a lot to do on that first day in the White House. His list includes starting up the mass deportation of migrants, rolling back Biden administration policies on education, reshaping the federal government by firing potentially thousands of federal employees he believes are secretly working against him, and pardoning people who were arrested for their role in the riot at the Capitol on January 6, 2021. I want to close the border, and I want to drill, 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 he said of his day one plans. When he took office in 2017, he had a long list, too, including immediately renegotiating trade deals, deporting migrants and putting in place measures to root out government corruption. Those things didn't happen all at once. How many executive orders in the first week? There will be tens of them. I can assure you of that, Trump's national press secretary, Caroline Levitt, told Fox News on Sunday. Here's a look at what Trump has said he will do in his second term and whether he can do it the moment he steps into the White House. Trump has said that, within two seconds, of taking office that he would fire Jack Smith, the special counsel who has been prosecuting two federal cases against him. Smith is already evaluating how to wind down the cases because of long-standing Justice Department policy that says sitting presidents cannot be prosecuted. Smith charged Trump last year with plotting to overturn the results of the 2020 presidential election and illegally hoarding classified documents at his Mar-a-Lago estate in Florida. Trump cannot pardon himself when it comes to his state conviction in New York in a hush money case, but he could seek to leverage his status as president-elect in an effort to set aside or expunge his felony conviction and stave off a potential prison sentence. A case in Georgia, where Trump was charged with election interference, will likely be the only criminal case left standing. It would probably be put on hold until at least 2029, at the end of his presidential term. The Georgia prosecutor on the case just won re-election. The newly elected US President Donald Trump is already shaping the country's policy on the main directions, Ukraine and Israel. This was reported by Bloomberg. With phone calls to the leaders of both nations, and another expected with Russian President Vladimir Putin, Trump's victory, and the possibility he will seek major policy changes, is reverberating in both countries and well beyond. One former Trump administration official, who asked not to be identified discussing private assessments, said the president-elect will have an immediate head start thanks to the perception that he will be tougher than his predecessor. U.S. adversaries may change their behavior in advance, the person said, some deterred by the threat of U.S. retaliation, and others seeking to exploit their remaining leverage before President Joe Biden leaves office. That's being felt most acutely in Ukraine. Trump promised during the campaign to solve the Ukraine crisis before Inauguration Day, and President Volodymyr Zelensky is already scrambling to catch up. Tesla CEO and Trump supporter Elon Musk was in the room for Zelensky's call with Trump this week, according to a person familiar with the matter. Musk has previously advocated for a negotiated solution in which Ukraine gives up some of its territory. Trump's election has changed the Ukrainian rhetoric and planning in their views about negotiations, said Shelby Majid, deputy director of the Atlantic Council's Eurasia Center. Majid said Ukraine is moving in the direction knowing that Trump has won, of accepting that negotiations are a reality. A former Trump administration official told the publication that the elected president will benefit from the perception that he will be tougher than his predecessor. According to the publication, the authorities of this country are beginning to realize the inevitability of negotiations. Trump is expected to pursue a policy of reluctance in the fight for territories occupied by Russia. Israel, however, will benefit the most from Trump's presidency. Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu is a longtime ally of Trump. Trump has already publicly stated that he will give Israel more freedom to prepare possible strikes on Iran, especially if Tehran decides to change its nuclear concept, the publication noted. The fact of an electoral result is itself reassuring for some countries, which were preparing for either outcome but unable or unwilling to move forward without knowing who would lead the US and in what direction.
Так, это танчик подорвавшийся. Сходу так и не определишь, правда, что за палка. Нормальная защита. Смотри, какая у него защита, братан. У него кирпичи защита были. Да, вот такую ямочку врывает. Противокумулятивный мангал был. Офигеть, он просто как чупа-чупс споткнулся в землю. Сложно представить, что такую машину можно так просто уничтожить. Что за танк? Сексуалька похож. Ну да, у него какая-то не свои не свойственная, блядь. Питерский танк 100%, потому что его башня вообще какая-то другая. Я вот думаю, это не леопард случайно. Не-не-не, он как не по нашему. Бля, башня вообще не свойственная. Я не знаю таких танков у нас. Блять, странная хуйня. Чего это, блядь? Кожа в какой-то дополнительный стоит у него на этом. Бля, вот того бы танка я тоже сходил. Какая-то это не наша хуйня. Ты думаешь? Маркировка наша, блядь, да. Это наш Т-90, это Т-90. Это Т-90? Это Т-90. А что вот это за хуйня? А, да, 90 это этот, вот как раз отвод от Тура. А, да? Это, да, 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 это 90. Ебать. Да, это 